Coming up on our program today, Jack Pelton opens up Oshkosh 2021. Also, Avidyne unveils the Vantage, and Stratus shows off their first generation of its experimental jet program. Those stories and more coming up on this special edition of Airborne Unlimited. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Kimberly Cape. We are bringing you this episode from AirVenture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. This week, the Whitman Regional Airport's tower is considered the busiest in the world. EAA's Jack Pelton opens up AirVenture 2021 after a two-year drought and talks about if this week's numbers will beat 2019's. Based on today's first day, the exhibitors all came back in force. We certainly have uh, well over 800 plus exhibitors, which is usually around what we typically are at. Um, camping so far is equal to 2019 levels, which was our record year. Aircraft arrival arrivals, this is the one that this morning that I just, it, it proved out as I was driving late in the evening yesterday from one end to the other, giving somebody a tour and looking at all the airplanes on the ground. Last year, Sunday, when the airport closed, we had 3,500 aircraft had arrived, and I think our highest number of any air venture prior to that, because we did have some rain events last, last air venture, was around 5,000. At 8 o'clock last night, we were at 7,928 uh, airplanes had arrived and been on the ground, and that was uh, before today's uh, official, official opening. So the numbers have panned out to be really, really significant, which is, which is great. Avidyne is introducing a whole new generation of glass panel cockpits and are using AI technology. Dan, opening day, Oshkosh 2021. It's been a long time, but uh, let's face it, you let off with a bang. You gave us a little bit of a glimpse of what was to come over the weekend. Tell us first about Vantage. Vantage is our new flight display system that's the beginning of a line of these, but the initial one is for the generation of Cirrus that have the original Avidyne Integra display. So it's an upgrade to 12-inch screens and much more powerful processing capability. It has redundancy and a number of other capabilities. It's tightly integrated with our IFDs and our DFC-90. It's going to be reasonably cost-effective, bigger than what it replaces all hybrid touch and so we think it'll be a really desirable upgrade for the Cirrus community and the beginning of a long line of products in the large flight display area for Avidyne. You're talking about bringing AI into the cockpit. Um, is this a, where we cue Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator or what's happening next? So we've started a project with a partner company in Switzerland named Dedalian whose their focus is on building certifiable AI for aviation. What we've built is a system that uses cameras just like human eye. It sees uh, roughly the same spectrum. It has roughly the same resolution only in all directions all the time and we can use that to uh, navigate and stay referenced to the ground uh, on a map even if uh, the GPS is switched off by the military over the middle of Nevada for you know practicing purposes. Um, we can see uh, where auto traffic is, um, roughly the same uh, distances and slightly better than uh, humans can if the visual conditions permit. And uh, we can find a runway. So uh, ILS systems that allow you know, all the way to touchdown are a couple of hundred uh, in the US. Those of us are the real moving targets, especially Hilo. That's right. Well, the Hilos, I mean, uh, we know that you know, some of the air ambulance operators and so forth, this kind of thing, uh, anything to be able to avoid uh, traffic and other obstructions they're very interested in. So that's what we've seen as we've started to talk to the industry about what we're doing. Dan Schwinn, boss at Avidyne, thank you so much, and we'll look forward to seeing the rest of the week and what else you come up with. Thanks, Jim. It's good to see you in the flesh. Stratos has flown its 716X experimental jet kit to Oshkosh. Uh, today we are debuting the Stratus 716X. It's a uh, VLJ. Man, it's a single engine jet. What uh, type of engine are you guys using for your uh, experimental model? The experimental model will run the Pratt & Whitney JT15D-5. It's a robust engine. Uh, there's been about 3,000 produced and about over 41 million flight hours. So a very reliable uh, engine. And then you're looking at uh, taking this experimental model, which is actually a kit, and advancing it into a certification under Part 23 at some point in the future. What, uh, what timeline do you guys envision for that? Right now our hope is to start flight testing the certified 716 in 2026 and hopefully be delivering uh, aircraft by 2028. Who, who are you looking to sell this aircraft to? 
Um, on the experimental side, we definitely are going towards the owner operator. We, we see ourselves being very competitive with a lot of the turbo props that are uh, similar size and performance uh, aircraft like the TBM, the Epic E1000, for example. Uh, we also think we're going to compete fairly well with some of the smaller other VLJs like the Citation Mustang, for example. I think as we go into a certified market, uh, we'll be able to chase some more of the commercial operators, guys that don't want to do air taxi and charter type missions. Um, and that should be uh, kind of more towards the certified market, definitely. Coming up after the break, we show you one of the coolest little helicopters we've seen in a while that's making its debut at Oshkosh. More news after the break. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon Fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the Record Out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. The Zephyr is what you have always wanted. A highly capable two-seat turbine-powered helicopter with great ramp appeal, 100 mile per hour cruise speed, 172 nautical mile range, and to top it all off, a first of its kind emergency airframe parachute system, the Curdy Design Zephyr. Unique, advanced, innovative, and highly capable. Your ultimate freedom machine is available now at Zephyr.eu. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited, brought to you from Air Venture 2021 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Now, if you see anything cool, make sure you use the hashtag you see on your screen. The Curdy Aerospace Zephyr is now available. The two-place turbine also has a parachute. Check it out. Jeff Magnus with the Curdy Zephyr. We just heard you talk about the kit build. Could you tell us a bit about how the helicopter flies? It's absolutely a delight to fly. First of all, it's a two-place helicopter with a turbine engine, 251 horsepower, derated to 141 horsepower, and it's got dual FADEX, so when you start the engine, unlike a traditional helicopter that has a throttle on the collective, we have a button or a knob on the panel, and it starts out at idle, goes to 55%, then goes to run, which is 90%, and the engine stays at 90%. And the neat part about that whole deal is because we get 100 horsepower extra in derating, you get all the torque immediately. We can cruise at 15,500 feet, and we have an HOG uh, that's hover above ground at 14,100 feet. It is just as nice as can be. So for the actual kit build, what does the kit look like when it arrives to the customer? The kit will be in nine parts, and it has a manual that's probably close to 900 pages. It tells you exactly where to put what nut, what bolt, it gives you pictures. It's incredibly detailed. You mentioned some different situations. What has Curdy done to prepare for emergency REV parachute that there's gotten there? Well, this is the first helicopter that comes with a parachute. The really neat thing about it is when this parachute is deployed, it, the helicopter drifts down at the same rate you would as if you jumped out of an airplane with a parachute. Not only that, it sits on the top of the mast so it doesn't destroy any part of the helicopter. When the helicopter lands, it's intact. It doesn't destroy it, it doesn't hurt it. It really is a nice deal. ANN's Jim Campbell had the chance to catch up with members of Piper's executive team and they share what's new. If you would, to give us the high points of your announcements at Oshkosh today and what we can expect throughout the week at Oshkosh. Well, as I kind of had mentioned before, um, we, we honored a Tuskegee Airman in there. I mean, you don't get to do, there's that, not a better high point than that. For me, that's made my week, my day, everything, that, um, that alone. That'd be the high point for my day. Um, aside from that, looking at the business side of things, we talked about the, the Garmin weather system that we put in. 
Um, you're not probably going to hear a lot of announcements from us when, on projects that we're working on going forward, not until they're done. Uh, we won't pre-announce things. Historically, I think we pre-announced over the last several years what we're going to work on, what we're going to do, and now you'll only hear about it once it's done. Buddy, tell me about the uh, weather system that you're incorporating in the overall avionics packages. Sure. So the new Garmin weather radar that we've incorporated uh, in the 600 and the 500, um, basically, if I had to sum it up, it basically adds automation. All of us have used radar products in the past that have been wonderful units, but they require a lot of technique and skill, right? They require a lot of fiddling and a lot of setting up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this system here, much like uh, some computer products we all like to either love or love to make fun of, it just works. And it works really, really well. Um, the automation makes it to where any pilot can concentrate now on the flying as opposed to constantly fiddling with the systems. Uh, the level of detail, the depth of color, the fact that it can look at a volume as opposed to just a collection of slices um, makes it a pretty amazing unit. I think the best way it's been just described is it takes an airline quality radar and puts it in a personal airplane. EAA Air Educate is gaining traction with different initiatives targeting future aviators. The concept for Aero Educate came about from some rather simple questions um, that have been asked for a long time. What can we be doing after a young eagle flight? What can we be doing to motivate and engage and cultivate interest in aviation? What can we do to create a better and broader understanding of aviation careers for youth, parents, and teachers? And then how do we create effective partnerships with industry? For the past three years, we've worked with industry and education to answer these questions. At the heart of this work were engagements with North Carolina State University and their College of Education and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach. The result is what we believe to be a best-in-class, web-based, no-cost program that brings aviation-centric educational experiences to youth ages 5 to 18. We're truly excited about the endless possibilities for AeroEducate and its potential impact on tomorrow's youth. You know, I think today's a really important day in EA's future. I've, I've said for the last couple of years that we've been developing this program, it really is going to be uh, part of our legacy that we'll be very proud of into the future. Because what it does is it takes the mission that we've been focused on for so many years, which was to bring young people into aviation, which we've done a really good job with, with the Young Eagle program. Over 2.5 million kids have been flown. But it doesn't, it, we never were able to kind of finish off what's next for them. And as, as Rick has mentioned, this is our commitment to not only getting them exposed to aviation, but then helping them on the journey to find their career and find their way and end up with a, with a career in all aspects of aviation. After the break, we have part one of an interview series with none other than EAA boss Jack Pelton. The desire for adventure lives in the heart of every aviator. Built on passion and unlimited attitude, Waco Aircraft Corporation is dedicated to turning that desire into a reality. Waco Aircraft's team of artisans use handcrafted techniques from the 1930s, combined with the latest technologies, to bring two of aviation history's most renowned biplanes back into the skies. If you're like us, you feel like it's been a long time since the aviation community last got together at Oshkosh. This year is special. And to help celebrate the return to Oshkosh, we're going to have our biggest sale of the year. That's right. You'll save 22% if you order any time between now and August 5th. And use the code OSHKOSH. Oshkosh. Welcome back. a and chats with none other than EAA boss Jack Pelton and what he expects for AirVenture 2021. Well, here we go again, Jack. It's been year after year after year with a slight interruption in the middle. Yeah, and 24 months interruption. That's yeah. been, been a long one. Aviation is resilient. EAA is resilient. AirVenture is resilient. 
And we're about to prove it, don't you think? I think so. I, I, you know, all the indicators are the pent-up demand to get back to where we were um, is, is proving out. Our pre-sale has been, been record high. As you mentioned, just out on the grounds already, you can feel the vibe of what's going on. It's, it's going to be a fantastic week. We've gotten so much communication along the lines of, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. Is it here yet? It's obvious this is going to be a barn burner. It is. It's, it's as you said, it's time. And it, you know, as Paul said many, many years ago, a big piece of this is about the people. And, and everybody wants to get back together and see their friends that they only see once a year. And uh, you know, after that long wait, they are extra eager to come back. What are you personally looking forward to? seeing at our venture this year? The Friday and Saturday air show, the tribute to the end of World War II, 75th anniversary plus one, because yeah. you had that little timeout yeah. in between. Details. Yeah. Um, the airplanes that we're going to put up in, in kind of an aerial historical sequencing of different battles that have occurred, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that as to how the different models were paired up um, and the ones that we've brought in that are extra special. So that's going to be a, a big one on my list. In the home build area, I keep feeling somebody's going to make an announcement. I don't know who and, and when or what it's going to be, but there's some things going on out there that have occurred that um, I'm going to be anxious to see if I get surprised. The vintage area this year, they've gone above and beyond. Their volunteers have made that probably one of the most beautiful places on the ground. I want to spend more time, now that I don't have all these evening activities, really looking at some of the beautiful restoration jobs that people have. Jack gets to go play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to that. I referred to to my team as to, at the end of last year, let's, let's just get back to basics. What is the real essence of what people come here for? Make sure we have good camping experience. Make sure we've got the things that are important as to why you come to AirVenture. And, you know, I don't come for the concert and I don't come for the banquets. I come for all the other hardcore aviation related items. What concerns you about the coming week? The variant concerns me. I, you know, you can't ignore that that's out there. I had a concern as to, you know, all of the social discourse that was going on on how we should be handling it as individuals. You know, am I a masker, not a masker? Or, you know, all those issues could cause some, some tension out on the grounds. I think Sun and Fun proved to us that that's not the case. That this community, the civil discourse was, was incredible. I, I thought they, everybody, could care less about what anybody's opinions or pro process. They just dealt with it in their own way. And, and that's what we're continuing to encourage is respect people's choices and let's just be here for all the right reasons. Tomorrow, Pelton shares how the pandemic affected the aviation industry and how they use technology to service their members. And we want to congratulate ANN's Maria Morrison for finding out today she got accepted to Columbia Law School. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Make sure to follow our social media pages you see on your screen and to tune in tomorrow to see everything that's happening at AirVenture 2021 Day 2.